All right, so I'm back here in Hollywood right now in front of the world famous Whiskey A Go Go. Today we're going to be talking about some memories of the 80s at. Sure. Okay. Hello? Whose camera is that? Excuse me. I don't know, but I'm comfortable on camera anyway. Go, Hello? What's going on, everybody? How are you doing today? I'm here in the corner. These guys. With my I... man Mike, German of Venice. All right. Welcome to the Sunset Let's go see Boulevard. what we can find. So I'm here right now at the Whiskey A Go Go on the Sunset Strip with Scott on tape and German in Venice. Scott on tape and German in Venice. Yes. Actually German in Hollywood today. Scott on German. And we're going to walk up and down the strip a little bit, talk about some of the stuff that happened here back in the 80s and 90s, but I also want to talk a little bit about, uh, you can't see it from here, let me walk around here. I want to talk about my time working here up in those offices. I was here a couple of weeks ago with me and Pete with Scott and with Pete from the Totally 80s room Pete had to go back home I can't get Scott to go home I keep asking him to go he won't go it's like my second home now it's right. like my home now yeah but, uh, Toronto's my second home <laughs> but we were here with Pete because uh, Pete was doing a video yeah. on the Sunset Strip and I did shoot a little bit of behind the scenes footage when we were inside the whiskey I'm gonna insert that into this video so that we can pretend like Pete is here with us today. Oh, nice. Now, the real reason that we're here is because Scott and I are going to be having another mud wrestling match. Oh, shoot. We've mud wrestled. Um, Kurt. Also, I think he does like mud wrestling. Yeah, he does. Wait, I did buy mud wrestling Kurt twice. Yeah, I think he does. How many that wins? Stuff. Two. Yeah, I think he does that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go inside the whiskey and see if they'll let us do it here. German Venice is going to be the referee. I'm jacked. So I worked here around like 99, 2000. Um, so I was like, you know, 20 years old and I knew it was cool, but I definitely took it for granted. I definitely didn't, you know, realize how cool it was. So this is where I would come every day and I would park in this lot. And then I would walk up those stairs and through that back door. Now, when I say I took it for granted, one thing that I can say is, I mean, I was like 20 years old and I had a key that opened that door. That's wild. That it was in my possession at all times. For the whiskey. Right. Oh, at any time, 24 hours a day, I could go and open that door and go inside the whiskey. And I didn't realize quite how cool that was right. at the time. Right, of course. You know? Should have made a copy. They probably changed the locks. Probably. As soon as, they, as, soon as, they, as soon as you left, change the locks. Yep. Kurt's gone. That window right up there, that was my office. So we'll go up there in a minute and check it out. Um, I worked here Monday through Friday as a concert booker. And then whenever we had shows that we booked, we would also have to come in and work those shows. If there was a weekday show, I'd come in and uh, work in the office from 10, like 10 to six, but then we would have to stay for the show. So I would end up working, you know, 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. I'd be here at the Whiskey. And most of the time, when I worked the shows, I worked in the box office, so. So you would find me right there inside of that box office. I just opened the door. Yeah. Like I, that, I was so second nation to me how many times I've been coming here in the past like month. I don't want to disturb the people that are in the room. Oh, There's people in there working. I don't want to disturb them. Let's just go straight to. Uh, Oh, never mind. I don't want to disturb Scott's them. disturbing them, so. German and Venice and Scott are down there exploring this right here. This is my old office. Oh, yeah. The old stomping grounds. So, all of this stuff wasn't in the office when I worked here. Uh, Mike has always he's been a major collector, but we didn't have all of this. He was kind of just starting out his collection back then. Did Jake come directly after me or was there someone in between me and Jake? Oh, there was probably like five people. Oh, there was? Okay. What about with the other five? Where do I land? Uh, Am I on the bottom still? No, you were probably like, maybe, I'll give you like third out of five. It's not, it's not awful. Yeah. You cared. You I, know, you 
tried to put like cool stuff together. Some of the old dressing rooms. Hey, when did this do that? What's that? Oh my gosh. Wait a minute. No. Uh, <laughs> I just started to get my... Scott on tape. Scott on tape. What? <laughs> Pete, totally 80s room. I'm here. What's going on in here? Photo shoot. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to walk in on that. Oh. I, thought we were, I thought we agreed to privacy. My, my boobies. My boobies are up. And then right across the way is one of the two bathrooms. Now, there's a lot of pictures that you can find online of different people sitting in the whiskey backstage bathroom. I know there's a picture of Jello Biafra sitting on the toilet. And like I said, this is where I would park every day, walk in through this door, and I didn't even have any idea that right up there was the Motley Crew house. Scott and GIV are leaving me. Hold on, wait up, guys. <laughs> All right, so now we're walking into the, where are we, where are we at? Rainbow. The oh, rainbow. rainbow. He's gonna take us in and show us the November rain booth. So I believe it's right here in the back. So there it is right there. That's, this is basically the exact shot that you get of everyone sitting at this table right here. And you can match it up two ways. One by those windows, but also there's a picture that you can see behind them. Now the pictures have been switched. The picture that you see in the video was right there. However, that's not the same picture that you see, but it is still here. It's just been moved right there. That's yeah, the picture that you see in the video. Here? They just moved it from there. To over here. But yep, that's the booth right there. <laughs> Luke was telling us there's a license plate in the office, a Fletch license plate. Yeah. Screen used? It's screen used from the Alfa Romero. Amazing. Yeah. But I have the coin from coming to America in the office too. No! It's right behind Luke's desk. It's like in a little frame. Okay. And it's like the one he like flips. Yeah. You know? All right, we're heading back to the office. Okay, so I should give a little proper introduction. This right behind me, this is Big Mike. Uh, his family has always owned the, uh, the whiskey and the rainbow, his grandfather Mario. But now uh, Mike is the big man in charge here and also We've been friends since we were, what, 13 years old? 13 years old, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I used to ride my bike to your house. That's right, I, th I think you actually rode it on the freeway a couple I of did. times. I did, it was just easier that way. Yeah. I was just way quicker to just hop on the freeway on the bicycle and uh, you know, get to Kurt's house. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, also, uh, Mike was my boss when I worked here as well. Um, we've got a lot of history together. We yeah. had a lot of fun together at the Sherman Oaks Galleria. Uh, all, fun. Also, if um, if any of you watched my my video about uh, memories of Magic Mountain, I talked about how the first time I ever went to Magic Mountain was uh, when I went for my buddy Mike's uh, my buddy Big Mike's birthday party, and I ruined Big Mike's birthday. Well, this is the Big Mike that I was talking about that I ruined his birthday. So sorry about that. That's all right, it happens. All right, well, I'm, I'm glad after so many years he could forgive me. But right now, we're gonna walk down to the whiskey and he's gonna show us some stuff. Hey, yes, I'm back again. Oh, great, it's Kurt's back. That's, that's what you used to say every day when I would come to work back in the day. That was the exact greeting. So let's talk about some stuff that's in here, Mike. So first of all, screen use Fletch license plate. Yeah. From the Alpha Romero. Smells pretty good. Show me the coin. Oh, it's down there in the corner, crooked on the wall over there. I don't really look behind you very often. It's probably been crooked for three months and neither one of us has cared. Dude, you let's you know, let's. Prior live on Sunset Strip, pretty cool too, right next to it. Right. This is a this is an old Motley Crew pass from '89. Oh, the match. I didn't get the matches. That's one of the old whiskey ticket stubs right there. Oh, and I mean, how you know, you got to point out zapped. Yeah. yeah, you have to have <laughs> zapped. Signed by Willie Ames and Scott Baio. Amazing. And is... Uh, That's Soul Man. We just had C. Thomas Howe here. Original Rainbow menu. Hand-drawn prices in there. Oh, wow. Kind of cool. 
Wow, the Chevy Chase show. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even know that show was on the air long enough for them to make a clock. They made a clock. They, they made a clock and you have it. And not only a Chevy Chase show clock, but a Teen Wolf 2 Frisbee. That is the one from Teen Wolf 2. They had like a cart where they were selling them. Yeah. Uh, oh. They all had little stickers on them. Right. And that's how they did it. That's so. the hero prop that they threw and Jason Bateman caught and it. And they caught it in his mouth. mouth. And Jason Bateman was here and we're like, dude, we have the Teen Wolf Frisbee upstairs and he would not come up and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, oh, it'd be cool to get him to sign it or something. He just like did not want to acknowledge it. <laughs> I mean, this is the original uh, set list from Van Halen. Uh, see, I didn't even see this. Seventy-seven. With the corresponding ticket stubs for them playing right. three nights here. It's like there's so much stuff that I don't know what to look at. Yeah, and I, forget, I just like, I end up missing everything. I mean, look, I didn't even see Caddyshack too. And I gotta say, I gotta give you props on the Caddyshack 2 because a lot of people don't give any love to Caddyshack 2. I really appreciate Caddyshack 2. So do I. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's not the first one, no, but it's no, no. it's a you it's know good. it's a yeah. good movie on its own. Yeah, it's really cool. Here's a cool old Ramones ticket from '78. Oh wow! Cool. Wait, hold on. What was the, What was the price on that? Was it six dollars and yeah. fifty cents? This is my. This is cool. Beach Boys, Black Sabbath, and Canned Heat. Same phone number. Huh. That was today. Not the Skid Row you're thinking of. Different Skid Row. Beach Boys and Black Sabbath playing here. The cool old whiskey menu. The giant war burger and the steak Bill Cosby. I found this in between <laughs> um, stuff at like in the Rainbow Storage and it's just like Roxette's Christmas Review in 1984. Like I just what? literally found that in like a stack of like I actually it was like old like billboards that were like stuck together and that was yeah. like in between it or something. I don't know what year it was, but the Buddy Miles, Stevie Wonder, playing the whiskey. I'm thinking about how much times have changed since when I worked here. How I mean, you know, obviously everyone now has their own computer. And That's true. We was, used to share a computer. We, we right had one computer. Yeah. yeah, and we'd have to take turns. And that computer that was it was right here was really just used for eBay, like 90%. I would wait for people to be done working so I could go search eBay yeah, on the computer. Yeah, that was mostly, and I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll be honest now, like when I didn't want to work, I knew that there was a good chance if I just started talking to you about certain toys. Right, you were good. That like I could get you to go on there and we would just be searching eBay for a right. while. I mean, and it was definitely a lot of time spent searching eBay. There was even one time where like I didn't want to work and I started talking to you about Universal Studios and I talked to you about it so much and do you remember this? You're like, all right, close up. We're going to Universal Studios. And the three of us just, we went to Universal Studios. Sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, it was a great day. So for the most part, the office looks the same, just a lot more uh, stuff on the walls. Yeah. But this is where I sat every day. This was my desk where Luke now sits. And Luke used to sit over here where the bar now is. And uh, where Jake is, this was nothing. This was, uh, we, we had the water cooler right here. We did have water cooler. And that, but yeah, other than that, that was empty space. So we filled it with Kool-Aid and ruined it. Oh, okay. And uh, this is where we sat. Do you, do you remember, I, I bet you're not gonna remember this. Do you remember when I brought in an Easy Bake Oven? And we sat, we sat right here. Do you remember this, Luke? I mean, it's sounding familiar. Kind of sounds familiar. Yeah, I just, I brought in an Easy Bake Oven and I, I, I thought I would bring it in and you'd be like, what's, dude, what, get that out of here. But I brought it in and you looked at it and you were like, Kurt, run across the street and get some bread and cheese and meat. We're gonna make little sandwiches. And we made like little tiny melts. Sounds about right. I've always you, been a fan of the Easy Bake yeah, Oven. Yeah. You sat right at that desk, like, you know, trying to get your hands in this little tiny pan, like squeezing bread in there. It was uh, it blew my mind that you could heat something with a light bulb. Right. Yeah. You were going to show me there's a video game. Oh, have you never been in here? I have not. I have not been in there since it was Mario's office. Well, now we have uh, transformed it. So we have the old school TV so we can play Nintendo Genesis and Super Nintendo games. Is there, is, are the systems? Oh. I have the systems, but then I have this new, like, yeah. you know, all-in-one combo because it, like, works perfectly. But I right. still do have an original Nintendo. I got a stack of games, which are duplicates from the ones I have at home. Ah. So, because I don't want to take my home collection. Right. So I just use these over here. And then, so then we got some stand-up, you know, off-road. Let, let me go back Iron here so I can get a good shot of this. Machine. 
How's the Dead 3? And then, you know, my favorite, Terminator 2 with the gun. So again, when I when I was here, this was uh, this was Mario's office, yeah. and nothing but business went on in here. I I would uh, come in here a um, couple times a day to send a fax that used to be over there, or yeah. to, when I had to mail something. Yeah. Um, there was definitely no video games no, in here. No, this, um, you know, this is kind of a the lounge area now. You know? Yeah, there was nothing fun. On the walls like this, like okay, more stuff from Zapped. Yeah, more Zapped lobby card. Yeah. Dude. This is cool, Monster Party. This is Hulk Hogan. It's a bunch of random people that were at a convention and all signed it. Pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, I got to also... Jimi Hendrix autograph. Oh, wow. Pretty cool. Oh, another Caddyshack 2. Another Caddyshack 2. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of respect for Caddyshack <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> These are cool busts of Jim Morrison and... Uh, Ray Manzarek. Oh, let me get where's, where's oh there we go. There's Ray. And this is cool. This is the stuff that uh, nobody gets to see when you're when you're. Yeah, nobody really comes in here. When you're. Me. Yeah, when yeah. you're driving on Sunset down there, you look at the whiskey, and above it, you see these windows, right here, and you may wonder, what's through those windows? Well. Yeah. Now you know. This is it. You were telling me one of the times that we talked recently, and I didn't know about this, about the ticket cage that used to be up here, that where people used to come, yeah, so they that, used to have to come up here to get tickets. So yeah, so back here. So this this was all connected, like one big room, and this was like a gated off thing. So you would line up over here, and then you'd get your, like this was like a ticket room right here. So everyone, so everyone would come up the back stairs yeah. and then line up this down whole, this hall. The, none of this stuff was here. Okay. So this all got added in later. So it was, yeah, you would just come in here. I, I don't know, it was during the 60s. But yeah, this was, it was all caged off. And all this other, so the offices were back there and this was just ticketing over here. Mm. It was like, there was like a big metal gate and stuff here. And it's weird, yeah. Huh. And then what's that now? Merch. Okay. Merch stores, yeah. A picture of Eddie, Eddie Van Halen in the, in in the, the dressing room. Dressing room yeah. So which, which dressing room? The main dressing room. The Right. So, okay. So this was originally it was a originally dressing, dressing room. room. Then when it turned into an office, and then for the office for a long time. It was an office when I was here. Yeah, exactly. And then we just probably in the last I don't know eight years we turned it back into a dressing room. Yeah. When I was here, this was Nick and Sean's office. Yeah, exactly. We wanted like a nice like for like headliner dressing room that you could lock the door and you know have nice couches and everything wouldn't get destroyed. You know? Right. Right. Because when I was here. When I was working here, the only dressing rooms were these were the two small ones across exactly, the way. Yeah. We lived off those for a very long time. Yeah. But if you notice, this one got cut in half. We made a closet back over there. So this one was bigger. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was okay. Bigger, yeah. Okay. Right, so got that ticket set right there. Was that 89? No, 1989. It was 89. There you go. Yeah. This, these were all covered up, so we, we uncovered all the original brick. And oh. These are all old airbrushes. And if you look downstairs, you can't see them because it's covered, but yeah. downstairs it's, it's all different neon colored go-go girls painted on the wall. Oh. Like lined up. If you watch Foxy Food Fight from the 80s, uh -huh. that was filmed here, you, you can see that wall. But you can see some of the original airbrushing. It's like a bus or something. That's cool. What was this covered up with? Like just drywall or whatever, and just paint it black. But we're like, you know, it might look cool to expose the brick and like show yeah. the whole building, you know. Well, so in the in the sixties when it opened, the stage was on this side. So, oh really? Yeah. So the stage was right here, and there was wait like a, wait so so like right like below right us? Below you, yeah. Like so okay. There, so that door wasn't there. Okay. It stopped there. This was all. This, it was railed off, and there was seating. Everything was kind of seated. Okay, so the stage was was basically where the bar is. Yeah. So like facing straight. this way. Uh -huh. And, and so, okay, so the, so, the, so the stage was here, and then facing this way, and the crowd would be, okay, see, I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. But that was very, that was not a very long time. I mean, we're talking from like 64 to probably 68 to 69 somewhere. Okay. That, and then, then they moved that stage over there. 
I know a lot of people, one of the first bands that comes to mind is The Doors. Yeah. So for The Doors. For The Doors, it was like that. So it, they, uh, it, it was the original stage for The Doors. Yeah, I think it was uh, that Daisy Jones show that just came out. Okay. They, re they came and filmed here, and they redid the whiskey, and they wanted it to look like that, so they made it where the stage was over there. Oh. And they, 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 they did an amazing job. Like, wow. Of, like recreating the whiskey of how it looked at the time. So that would have been like when there was actual go-go cages here. Yeah, so up there where that thing was, where the little whatever above the stage, that was a go-go cage, and then this, where the sound guy is, was a go-go cage. These were set in go-go cages over here, so we turned that into sound booth, not just kind of storage for band stuff. For a long time, that's where the band used to sell the merch. Remember, there used to be stairs right here. And these, so the booths were here in the 60s. There were stairs right yeah, here. The booths were here in the 60s, so they got rid of the booths all through the 80s, and there were stairs that took you upstairs right here, and... This is where bands would sell merch. Like, you know, this was like a merch setup. So then we wanted to bring the booth back, so you had actually some seating down here. Yeah. So we tore the stairs out and put all the booths back in. So these are newer booths. I had this memory of talking to somebody upstairs by the stairs, and I it was over here. And then I'm like, but there's no stairs over there. I'm imagining that. But so there were there stairs there. here. Yeah. Yeah. For most like, of my life, there were stairs there. When I was here, there were the stairs were there. So how, how long ago did you rip out the stairs and put the booths back? Late nineties, early two thousands, I'd say. If okay. I had to guess. Do you have? I mean, there, you probably got a lot of memories flowing through your brain from like hanging out at the Rainbow and stuff. Is there like anything that stands out of like from like the late? Well, I was gonna say just from the eighties. You probably don't remember a lot from the early eighties because we we're the same age. So like maybe the late eighties, early nineties people that you remember seeing, being around the rainbow, hanging I mean, out. There's so much. Yeah. Right. I mean, little things. I remember 89, Motley Crue. I forget what album it was, but that, I remember them like doing, filming the video here. Uh -huh. And I remember that as a kid, like that was a big deal. I remember the Terminator 2 yeah. being filmed when they filmed that whatever video for Terminator 2. You, like, you could I be was, mine. Yeah, you, right? yeah. Yeah, you could be mine. Like I remember, I was hyped, I don't know Schwarzenegger, I remember Schwarzenegger being at the Roxy and walking across. Yeah. That. Uh, one of the coolest things here was uh, Lemmy's 50th birthday party. Mm. And uh, Metallica performed dressed up like Lemmy. Oh, they wow. Put, like fake moles on. Yeah. They did their hair and they did a whole like set of Motorhead songs. Uh, the police, when they got back together, they did their press conference here. So it was like nine in the morning. This was like in the, whatever, you know, late 90s or 2000s. And, uh, that was cool. Just like wake up and come here in the morning and watch the police play. Yeah. For the first time ever. I've never seen them. You know, right. Like it was pretty cool. Do you remember from the wild times, like seeing a lot of the hair metal bands there? Yeah, no, you know, I, I, re I remember those times just as a kid, or we come to dinner, you know, right. and, and hang out, and like you get there, you be there late, and I mean, yeah, it was a, it was a, a sea of people. You you, know? You're and you're just there to like have a cheeseburger, and yeah, then yeah. David Lee Roth is next door, you know, next exactly, to you, like getting yeah. blasted. Right. So I ended up shooting way more footage than I realized, and I'm gonna have to break this video into two parts. So that's going to do it for part one, but in part two, we're going to continue to walk up and down the Sunset Strip. I'm going to point out some more stuff, share some more of my memories, and we're going to go inside the world famous Viper Room and get a private exclusive tour. So make sure you join me for part two. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'm going to let these two guys wrap things up. Well, thank you for letting us hang out with you, you know, so to get me into this place right here, that was pretty cool, the rainbow. Thank you for bringing me up there. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to his channel, he needs subscribers. It's easy to do, just push that red button. I think so you said, just click the red button. Yeah. Thanks for watching everybody, rest in peace to whoever I did a video about, because usually there's death involved. Right. Peace. Oh. How do you end your video? Just saying. <laughs>